Now for the examples. There we go. So that would be 8x, right? So once we have 8x, well, we don't quite have 8x, we just have x. So, well, let's see. How do we get an 8 in front of that x? Well, we multiply by 8 and by 1 8. So we have 8x, um, e to the 4x squared dx. Now, for the purpose of my example, I'm going to rewrite this slightly just to kind of clarify a couple of little points. Um, so we have e to the 4x squared times 8x dx. Okay. I only write that again. This is for the notes for the example. Um, so notice that 8x dx is the derivative of 4x squared. Now, we don't, why don't we find the derivative of 4x squared? Notice I didn't put a dx here because what's the derivative of x? 1. So there's an implied 1 right there. If I wanted to, I could put dx, but that gets confusing really fast. And so it's just we don't usually write it that way. So here we have 8x dx. So this is du. It's the derivative of this exponent. So we have the integral of e to the u du, which by this definition is just e to the u. So we keep our coefficient, our 1 8, our scalar. And we have the integral of e to the u du is just e to the u. So e to the 4x squared. And we put plus c. This is an indefinite integral. Now, our second example here, we've got a slightly different problem. First off, notice that we have two e to the x's in here. Right? We have e to the x in the numerator and in the denominator. Now, if we take the derivative of e to the x, we get e to the x, but we don't get like another e to the x. Right? Like if I take the derivative of e to the x, I get just e to the x. I don't get like e to the x times e to the x or like that. Right? There's nothing else there. So if I take the derivative of like this, I, I would get an e to the x, but I don't get a second e to the x. Are you with me there? So like on this one, notice, again, we just had the 1 e to the x, and then we had another x hanging out, because that was the derivative. So if we took the derivative of e to the x cubed, we might get 3x squared e to the x. So there's our x squared. Uh, there's an 11, right, which we can turn into a 3. But it doesn't explain away this guy down here at the bottom, right? So this is kind of out of place. So, well, what if we look at, think about what we did yesterday? Yesterday we had, uh, if we could get the derivative of the denominator and the numerator, right? So if we take the derivative of this whole denominator, uh, well, we would get 3, right? e to the x cubed plus 4 squared times uh, the derivative of e to the x cubed, so that would be uh, whatever, right? But we don't have e to the x cubed plus 4 squared up here. Right? So that can't work out either. So let's try writing it another way, right? So we've, it, it's not just a straightforward e to the u problem. It's not a lin problem from yesterday. So our other toolbox we have, well, we have an exponent of the denominator. So let's try rewriting this with a negative exponent. All right, let's just rewrite it and see if we can see something. So e, 11 e to the x cubed x squared times e to the x cubed plus 4 to the negative third. All right, so not changing anything, just rewriting it, trying to trying to find something that jumps out as, okay, maybe this will help. So let's see here. Well, now I've got this, it's more apparent, I've got this quantity right here, right? And if we take the derivative of this quantity, uh, well, we would get, the derivative of this would give us uh, 3x squared e to the x cubed. Right? And the derivative of 4 is 0. So this is almost this. The only thing that's out of place is I want a 3 instead of an 11. All right, everything else is perfectly fine. I've got x squared. I've got e to the x cubed. So, well, how do I change an 11 into a 3? Well, does this 11 have to stay inside this? This, this uh, integral. So look at it. Are we multiplying by 11? Yeah, so that's a scalar. So we can pull that out of the integral. All right, so instead of having the 11 inside, I can pull the 11 outside. And now how would I get a 3 there? Uh, 
How do I put a, I put a three there. Can I just do that? What else do we have to do? We have to multiply by one third or come out here and divide by three. So now we've got this, which is the derivative of this inside. So I've got u to the negative third du. So we've got 11 thirds. Now the integral of u to the negative third, how do we do that? And how do we do if it's x to the negative third? It's the same idea. How do we do x to the negative third? Add, add 1 to the exponent, divide by the new exponent. So in this case, add 1 to the exponent. So what's our new exponent going to be on my u? Negative 2, so I'm going to have e to the x cubed plus 4 to the negative second, and that's going to be over negative 2. And so we can simplify this a little bit. First off, we can 11 thirds times this negative 2 gives us negative 11 over 6. Right, so I've got negative 11 over 6. And I've got this negative exponent, so this becomes a denominator. So I've got e to the x cubed plus 4. Oops, this should be, should be the same size as the e. Let's see. And so this really complex, ugly looking expression right here is actually, now I wouldn't say simple, but fairly straightforward power with the reverse chain rule. Okay, so again, the trick here is to just, you've got to kind of have an open mind. I know that sounds weird. You have to have an open mind and be looking for something where, again, you're finding the derivative of part and you see something that is similar to it, where all your, all your, the only difference is some constant multiple away, and then you can essentially rewrite it. Now, there's one more example that you guys don't have. Go ahead and flip over to the back of the blank page. Go ahead and write this, the integral of sine of theta times e to the cosine of theta e theta. Somehow, whenever I make copies of this, it completely skips like two pages, and I didn't realize it until third period. So again, we have e to a power here. So the first thing we want to look at is, well, what's the derivative of that power, of that x form? So the derivative with respect to theta of cosine of theta. Negative sine of theta. Right. Do we have negative sine theta here? Not quite, right? Almost. We need to rewrite it. We need to come over here and say, well, I want negative sine of theta, d theta, right? That'll be my du. This is du. Um, and then I've got e to the cosine theta, where cosine theta is my u. So here's my u, here's my du. But I, the negative wasn't there, so what else do I need to do? Got to bring a negative outside. All right, so I'm Multiplying by a negative, just to multiply by another negative, not changing anything. And so now we've got e to the u, du. And so we have negative, and the integral of e to the u, du, is just e to the u. So we have e to the cosine theta. Let's see. So look at problem number one. Okay, so again, notice we have two e to the x's. That's usually a sign that we're not going to be able to just say, oh, well, u is this, so this is e to the u. You have two e's, chances are it's got to be something else. So we start looking around and we say, well, we've got a quantity here at the bottom. Notice we have a square root of something. So let's start with that. That's part of the trick to doing these quickly and, and, and correctly. It's saying, well, let's find the quantity. I've got a quantity of e to the 2x minus 2x. So what would be the derivative of e to the 2x minus 2x? In other words, what's the derivative of that inside? 
If that were my U, what would be U prime kind of thing? I think this is like an if if kind of thing. So what would it be? Not everyone at once. The two e to the two x, because the derivative of e to the two x is two e to the two x minus two. So we start looking around, we say, well, if this were my u, I would need u prime someplace. Do we have 2e to the 2x minus 2? Or do we have anything that we can turn into 2e to the, e to the 2x minus 2? Oh, yeah, we got a 4, right? So if we just divided by 2 up top here, we would get this, right? And so coming over here, I would have the integral of, I'm going to say, 1 half of 4e to the 2x minus 4 over, um, well, you know what? How else might I want to write this over square root thing? What would I want to do with that, you think? Yeah, bring it up to the top and write it as a negative 1 half. So we can kill two birds with one stone. So e to the 2x minus 2x to the negative 1 half. But this 1 half wasn't there. I'm introducing the 1 half. But I can't just do that. What else do I have to do? If I decide to put a half here, what do I have to put outside? All right, so if I divide 1 by 2, I've got to multiply the other, multiply by 2. So now, this along with that dx, right, that is our du. This is our u. So we have u to the negative 1 half du. Okay. So what, what do we do now? Keep the 2. How do we integrate u to the negative 1 half? Add 1 to the exponent, divide by that new exponent. So add 1, so we have e to the 2x minus 2x, so that's not changing. Add 1 to this exponent, so negative 1 half plus 1 is a half, and then divide by that new exponent. And so we might go ahead and simplify this a little bit. 2 divided by a half, well that's 4. And then we can rewrite this as a square root, so square root of e to the 2x minus 2x. Let's see. And you can leave it as the 1 half power is equivalent of Okay. For number 2, I'm going to give a hint, and then that's all I'm going to say for today. Uh, my hint is, first off, you may consider thinking of this as two separate fractions being multiplied. Maybe something like e to the tan of t times 1 over cosine squared t. One way you might think about writing it. Are those equivalent, by the way? Are these two things the same? You convince yourself they are. If you're not sure, think about it some more and convince yourself they are. Um, and then I want you to think about one more thing, and that is, how else might you write secant squared So put these two ideas together, and I'll bet it'll just guide you right down the path.